Hi everyone, in this video we're going to show how to modify Crowbox to run off of a USB power bank. To start off, we're going to talk about power banks themselves, um, and I've got a few here, and there's a reason I have more than one to show you. Um, I want to start with this one. This is a power bank made by Voltaic Systems. Um, this is one of my own. I've had it for a couple of years, and it's one of seven power banks that we bought specifically to test with the Crowbox, and this is the only power bank that works and I'll kind of explain why that is um, what, but when I talk about these other power banks here. So we have a couple power banks that are strikingly similar to each other um, as you know 90% of power banks on the market are um, and uh, I know these are easier to find and less expensive but these will not work for the crow box and the reason that they won't is because power banks like this are designed specifically to charge phones and tablets that's the job and they do it just fine um, but one of the things that power banks like this do is that they detect when whatever is plugged into them is finished charging and they turn themselves off. And the way the power banks like this uh, figure out that the device that they're attached to is done charging is that they measure how much electricity is being drawn from the power bank. And when that amount gets very low, the power bank decides that whatever is connected is done charging and the bank will shut itself off. I should say that if we did connect this power bank to our crow box, the crow box would run just fine for somewhere between one minute and ten minutes, and that just depends on the, uh, you know, however the internal timers of power banks like this are set for auto shutoff. Um, but they definitely won't run a crow box for more than a couple of minutes before they decide that your crow box is actually a phone that is fully charged, and they just turn off. Um, the reason that the Voltaic bank works is because. Uh, these are designed specifically not only to charge our phones and tablets, but they also are designed to power low current applications continuously. Uh, and the way they do that is they have a feature called always on, which means that when I turn this power bank on by pushing the button, uh, it'll stay on for as long as something's connected to it, even if it's using very little electricity. Um, and our Crowbox does use very little electricity. It uses less than 50 milliamps, um, and that will trigger the auto, the auto shut off on every other kind of power bank except for this one. Now I should say this is I think a model V15 that I've had for a couple of years. I might have mentioned that already. Um, I don't think Voltaic still offers this one, but Voltaic has a brand new line of power banks and they still um, have the always on feature. Um, so um, specifically, uh, this is the only brand of power bank that we know for sure will work. So if you're shopping for a power bank for the Crowbox, I highly recommend you look at Voltaic Systems. Um, because they're the only bank that I know for sure has an always-on mode. The next item we'll need is a USB breakout cable, and I got this one uh, from Amazon. And what you see is an ordinary USB uh, plug on one end, and on the other end we get a terminal block, which gives us access to the five wires inside this USB cable. Um, we're only interested in the power wire and the ground wire. We're going to ignore the three signal wires. You know, we have no use for those. Um, but this will make this process really easy. Next, we need a couple of lengths of wire. Uh, ideally, you'd have a black one and a red one. Red for power, black for ground. Um, this is ordinary 16 gauge stranded copper wire that I use for pretty much all my projects. Nothing special about this wire in particular. Uh, I have already stripped and twisted the ends just so that we can keep moving in the video. You don't have to watch me do that. We'll need whatever screwdriver we're going to use to to uh, open our terminal blocks. I'm going to bring that over with my wires, and we're going to look at the actual housing here. And we can see that there are uh, letters molded into there are symbols molded into the black plastic here um, that tell us which wires which. Um, all we're interested in is the plus, which is voltage, and the negative, the minus sign, which is our ground wire. So of all the five wires in this um, USB cable, we're only going to be breaking out these two. Um, so from the left of this terminal block, from this perspective, we're going to be getting into the second and into the fifth um, block. So I'm going to start here by putting my screwdriver in, and I'm going to try to kind of show you how the these terminals open, at least on this one. You can see as I turn the screw, that jaw kind of lowers. So, and it's attached to the screw, so I have to push that. So we're going to take our red wire for power, and we're going to get it into the top of this terminal. And then I'm going to get this down to my, my work surface here. Tighten that. 
internal screw. Just nice and snug, so my wire's in there. I'll check to see that it's in. And then we're gonna repeat that process on the fifth terminal, which is minus, which is our ground, and that's gonna be my black wire. So I'm gonna insert that, tighten down this terminal block. Apologies for the shadow. <coughs> the lighting's not how I wanted it. Okay, so now we have that part done. So if now we look at our terminal block here, uh, where the plus sign is on the black plastic housing, I have the red wire attached. And where the negative sign is on the housing, I have my black wire attached. Uh, so now we've properly broken out the two wires inside of this cable that we care about. I'll set that aside. Okay, so moving on, we're definitely going to need our crow box. Um, here's mine, and you're probably thinking, what are you looking at here? Um, this is a bench model that I made of a crow box. Uh, the exact same guts as any other crow box. It's just all kind of exploded onto a piece of plywood. Um, this is the bench model that I use when I'm testing new software or measuring uh, different things, just doing experiments. Um, but I want to stress it's exactly the same as any other crow box. And if you focus on this area right here, um, you'll see exactly the same thing that you have on your Crowbox electronic sled. Um, but uh, there are a couple differences over here. I have a little switch set up. This is my perch switch, and um, when I press this, it sends the same signal as when a bird lands on the Crowbox perch. And over here, I have a coin deposit button, and when I push this button, it sends the same signal that um, the Crowbox receives when a coin rolls through and hits the coin sensor. And I've got my servo right here um, so that I can monitor what it does. Uh, inside of a crow box, this would have a rotor on it, and uh, it would be responsible for opening and closing the sliding lid for the reward basket. Now, I should say that uh, the work we're going to do focuses all around this corner right here, this terminal block. Um, so you'll just need to pull your sled out of your crow box so that we can get to that terminal block. And uh, the first thing we want to do is remove the power pigtail for the AC adapter. Um, and before we do that, just note quickly that uh, here, the black wire, the ground wire, uh, from this perspective goes into the left terminal and the red wire, the voltage wire, goes into the right terminal. So I'm going to remove those because we don't need the pigtail anymore. So I like to use one hand to support that terminal block uh, while I remove these screws just to keep it from popping out of the breadboard. So we're going to loosen both of these screws and remove our power pigtail, which we're not going to need anymore for now. Put it away, but don't throw it away. Um, and we'll bring over our USB breakout cable. Now, um, all we're gonna do is put these red and black wires where the pigtails red and black wires were. Gonna get these guys twisted off nicely. And so uh, the ground wire goes into the left terminal block. Put that there and give that terminal block a little support while I screw this into place. It's in there, so we'll do the power wire now. It goes into the right terminal. Again, we're going to just hold onto that block a little bit while I screw this in. And there, so now we have tested. Just give these a little tug, make sure they're in that block okay. Um, the next thing to discuss is that we've created a couple of weak points here. Um, now the reason that I like this USB breakout cable is because it has a nice flexible USB cable that attached to it, so that'll give you some freedom uh, when you're figuring out where to put your power bank inside your crow box. But these wires here um, are not designed to be flexible, so um, if we were to move these a bunch, um, at some point they will snap off at this terminal here or this terminal there. So um, for that reason I recommend strapping or gluing down your USB terminal block to your electronic sled. Now, um, this part is a little confusing, I know, but normally the electronic sled is about this wide, so you don't have room for, in your crow box to put it over here like I do on this plywood, but uh, in your electronic sled, you will have a nice bit of space right here. So what I suggest doing is bending those wires that we just installed in the terminal blocks 
just like this so you can get your terminal your USB terminal block right over here on your electronic sled and you can hot glue that into place or strap it into place and that way um, that'll be held secure you can fiddle with this USB cable all you want without um, moving these wires here which as I said will be prone to breaking so now that we have our um, our USB breakout cable installed we can power up so I'm going to take my power bank here plug the USB cable in and we're going to power up so I'm going to push the power button there we go Crowbox powers up servo's going it's closing the lid right now So this crow box is currently configured in phase two. So if I were to push this perch switch like a bird landed on top of the crow box, it should open the reward basket, which it does. And there'll be a 15 minute, sorry, a 15 second delay there. And this will be the time that the birds have to, to remove rewards from the basket. And then there'll be 15 discrete steps as the servo closes the lid. And that's the behavior that we want. And there it goes. Okay, so now I'm going to push my training button and put this crow box into phase three. And that means that this crow box is now watching for um, coin deposits, not perch uh, activity. So if I push the perch switch, nothing happens, that's expected. But if I were to deposit a coin, the crow box basket opens, and this is when the bird would, the crow would have the opportunity to, to take rewards from the basket. So I kind of have everything on this sheet of plywood here. I'm trying to get it all into the frame. But uh, this is a self-contained crow box running off of a Voltaic power bank. Um, there is a bunch of stuff to know about how long um, a particular power bank would run a crow box. Um, all of the information about that, all the math that you would need to know, is available on um, the crow box wiki and on the crow box Google group. So I suggest you look there if you want more information about that before you go shopping for a power bank. But that's all there is to this conversion. It's done. Um, so yeah, there's a self-contained crowbox running off portable power.